Hey guys, King of Times here. Today I'll be your judge, your jury, and your analyst. And today I bring to you my top three teams in Ultra Premier Classic with Warian. Now, all we know, obviously, the big fluffy uh, mustache, beard, walrus thingy. I don't know what else to call it, but you know what? This big San Francisco, well, depending if you got yours from San Francisco, giant walrus is going to be really good for Ultra Premier Classic and also for Open Ultra League. So first I'm going to be doing Ultra Premier Classic, then Open Ultra League. The reason why is Ice is a really strong Pokemon in the meta and Walrion is kind of like, you know, Obama Snow, you know. I know it's Obama, but you know, it's Obama. I, you always say Obama. If you didn't vote, you don't know, now you know. So yes, Obama Snow, absolutely. But it functions as a more powerful version of Obama Snow because Obama Snow doesn't really have coverage against Steel types. That's Obama Snow's biggest weakness. Water Wind with Earthquake can hit for super effective damage with Earthquake and it threatens the Pancakes and Icicle Spear is a Body Slam clone. And with Powder Snow, it's just, destructive as heck it's really strong really powerful and it's extremely good for ultra premier classic so not only did it flip great league around but also flipped open ultra league and ultra league i think in ultra league and open ultra premier classic is where it had more weight to the meta rather than open great league because a lot of viable things in open great league in ultra league there's a lot of strong other strong picks like trev etc a lot of strong teams and combinations that go out there. However, Walrein is, is like top three in every, is literally like every single league. So again, these are going to be my top three teams for Ultra Premier Classic. It's going to feature Walrein in the lead and also as a safe switch. You can also use in a closer in Ultra Premier Classic. It's also a top 10 closer. So with that being said, if you can catch those Dragonites, etc. Or you Earthquake those Pancakes, it can be very strong and do a lot of work for you in Ultra Premier Classic. For my mental health tip of the day, toxic positivity. So what is that? Most of you probably have seen it a lot around Pokemon Go PvP. This is because we're fed up and sick of Niantic. But you know what? There are two things. One, you have guys like me or individual traders like me that are willing to call out Niantic on all their stuff and aren't affiliated with Niantic in any way, shape, or form. In other words, I'm not part of the creator's team or anything like that. So I can give you unbiased opinions about Niantic because I don't actually work with them and I have a relationship with them. Yes, I make content for their game. That doesn't mean I ever want to work with them ever. They are a terrible company. And I'm also a therapist. So there's something called transfer. So I have to watch out for that. But also number two, on the other side, you have people that will tell you no matter how long Go Bally comes out or no, uh, has been out PvP in general, or no matter how broken it is, that you should always be positive. You should always look at the bright side because there's always potential for this game to be an enormous esport. Despite the fact that there are games like Halo, Valorant, mind you, Valorant actually came out around like uh, 2020, 2021. And it is one of the biggest esports in the world right now. Valorant. Not Pokemon Go PvP. Not with Pokemon behind it. Valorant. And also something called Fall Guys. And there's a bunch of things like if you talk, hold me talk about Rocket League. Yes, cars that kick a soccer ball. That don't have Pokemon behind it. Are literally eclipsing us in the esports conundrum. And that's really like more on that later for my... But basically for toxic positivity. You will have people that will tell you it's okay to feel like nothing is wrong. But, no, actually, I said that backwards. It's okay to feel like if something is wrong. If you think this game is crap, it is crap. No matter what or however we're spinning around, this blind three format, everything Go Battle League is right now, could be so much better. And because the company that you go for and the company, I made, the company that is out there and has had this game out forever refuses to do anything different or make improvements or listen to community feedback regarding Pokemon Go PvP, there's nothing we can do. And I don't mean like in the way like, oh, you stay with the same system. It's pretty obvious that the system right now, this tap, tap, blap, blap, does not work. It is not great. And it's okay if it's not great. But that doesn't mean it to be shoved down your throat and make you feel like you have to be so positive about it all the time. It's actually mentally toxic and really bad for your mental health. And because I'm literally, as I'm aware of, the only mental health professional that actually make content for this game in this field... 
I'm the only one that can ethically tell you it's bullshit. So, pardon my French, usually I don't cuss or curse, but it's what it is. It isn't great. It's not going to be great, not for a while. It hasn't been great for a while. You, as a player base, deserve a better system and a des deserve definitely deserve a better game. So, putting that out there, ToxPod City runs rampant. It's okay to feel like this game is like crap because this game is crap right now. It can be better. And you... The first step to fixing a problem is to recognize there is one. You probably heard that quote before in some way, shape, or form. That's existent everywhere. If not, if I operated the same way Niantic did in the United States Air Force, a lot of people would be dead and a lot of things would have never got done and I would have failed every single mission I would have been a part of. I would have never gone into metal in Afghanistan if I operated the way Niantic did. So, don't be toxic positive. Recognize when things are wrong. Go out there, do something else because Pokemon Go PvP ain't worth all this stress. Without further ado, here are my top three teams with Warrior 4 Ultra Premier Classic. All right, so the Warrior Trevcore is incredibly powerful in Ultra Premier Classic. Not only did Trevenant flip its, the meta on its way upside down, kick it to the curb, and John Cena its way to victory. Well, technically, it's like John Cena because, you know, it's a ghost type, so you can't see me. That was a really terrible wrestling reference. So you can roast me in the comments if you would like. But yes, John Cena. You can't see John Cena. And just like Trevenant because it's ghost type, you can't see it. But... In Ultra Premier Classic, you're going to see it a lot because it really is that good. Paired with Walrein, it covers Walrein very well because it's able to cover those... It's able to cover those those fighters and it also is able to take out those rock types, etc. Even though there isn't a lot of rock types that go around because of Seed Bomb. So it does have coverage. Of course, there's things like Obstagoon, etc. that can give you a hard time. However, Walrein is excessively bulkier in Ultra League because it's close to level 40. So it's close to being maxed out. So, super bulky, super powerful. But, yes, it's really dang good. That's what I'm trying to say. So, when you pair Walrion and Trevenant around, you're going to get a coverage model from hell. This features Walrion, Kingdra Seatrich, because we know Kingdra Seatrich has been good forever. Since Ultra Premier Classic and since Ultra Premier Cup. Back when it was just Ultra Premier. Instead of having Classic around it. So... Very good. This team doesn't have a lot of bulk. It basically functions like the Empoleon Double Dark, the Double Dragon team, just in a different kind of format, different kind of mode. Great safety, great consistency. As you see here, against overall giant meta, this team does incredibly well. Walrein does super good because it breaks Needle Queen. You see Needle King Swampert and Trev, it beats all of them. It also gives the Charmers a hard time. A hard time. And... Because of the fact that it's way bulkier in Open Ultra League, it's very strong. It can even give Venusaur an incredibly hard time in the two-shield scenario. So a lot of combinations where Walrein will do well. Even against the water tanks, if the water tanks aren't carrying Skullbash, or Ice Water Tanks as in Lapras, if they're not carrying Skullbash, it's going to be very rough for them. But as you see, Walrein is just beastly and absolutely annihilates and wrecks this meta. As you see, the only thing that this, this team has a really low threat score, but the only thing is Obstagoon. So Obstagoon is going to go to town against Walrein and against Trevenant. You can save switch into Kingdra or you can sack Walrein in the lead. So that's another thing you can do Walrein in the lead. Obstagoon, Walrein can do a lot of chip damage against Obstagoon before it goes down, even if it does have cross chop. So as you see here, Obstagoon wins, but a 686 rating is not that great. Well, it's okay. But this also means that, as you see, Obstagoon has to blow all of its shields. So Obstagoon, so what you can do in this scenario is you can blow all of Obstagoon's shields, as you see here, and then you can farm down Obstagoon, which is our, yeah, and then you can farm down Obstagoon, which another team I have right here features that. So then, example, you could have a Fire Runner back, like Surf Etched or whatever, sack Water in the lead, punch the unholy crap out of Obstagoon, and then you could burb your way to victory. I just throw all that energy at everything in the back. So... Again, sacking lead strats with Warren is very good. And Warren is a beast. And combined with this team, Kingdra Say Switch. If you get the debuff with Kingdra Say Switch, you can flip back switch as usual. And then you can realign for the W. So very strong team. Does really well against overall meta. You lose lead with Warren. Say Switch into Kingdra. You can even Say Switch into Trevenant because Trev operates as a Say Switch as well in Ultra Premier Classic. So you got a lot of versatility. This team is very flexible. And as you see, Warren and Trev together make a powerful core for Ultra Premier Classic. All right. So as you see here, we have Trevenant, Warren, and Serpent. So remember the strategy I mentioned before where you can paint out the Obstagoon or whatever and then beat the unholy crap out of whatever comes in because Warren is so godforsakenly bulky and does so much damage. 
That is what we're doing with this team. Yes, Yawarin is a very viable C switch because of what happens is this. For the previous team where you have Trev in the back, you can kind of catch Gallade C switches if they throw Gallade into you because Trev is very powerful against Gallade. In this instance, you can also bait out other fires. For example, if you safe switch Walrein into Obstagoon, you can do the strategy I mentioned before with you break both shields, leave it near dead, and then punch it down with the Surfetch. This is what we're doing here. Walrein, Surfetch in this instance has Bleep Blade and Brave Bird. So I like Leap Blade and Brave Bird. Yes, you can have Night Slash for those ghost types, but because we have Trev and Walrein, Walrein still does a decent amount of damage with Earthquake, and of course, Treviant absolutely slaps the unholy crap, or rather, bombs and ball totally balls out. Ball so hard, your elo will never recover. Actually, I hope your elo recovers because Trevenant, even though it's really good, there are weaknesses. But it's a great freaking lead. And that's why we have Trevenant in the lead, Walrian, Safe Switch, and Surfetch to close out. Not a lot of bulk. We're going to do a ton of damage. Heavy, heavy damage. All damage. All gas, no breaks. All gas, no breaks. Just a heavy, heavy damage. As you see, great safety and consistency, but a ton of coverage. In this instance, you could choose to sack Trev, or you just outright win with Trev, break as many shields as you can, and then you can send Walrein and Surfetch to do some work. Overall, against a lot of the other meta, this team does very well. Walrein does beat Trevenant in the lead pretty dang hard, so if you do see it, I advise you to shoot it into it and then force the mirror. So... Yeah, definitely, like, I definitely, like, go into the mirror, or you can sack Trev in the lead. Again, don't recommend it, because Bison does so much damage. But again, say switch, mirror match, Walrein, and then Surfetch. If you win switch with Walrein, or you can farm down Walrein, you can do a lot of strats and a lot of plays with this team. Very low threat score, even lower than the one from before, and there's not actually one team that'll actually core break this entire team. As you see, you do lose against Sylveon, Gengar. Of course, Charizard is a freaking monster from heck. However, if you are able to ball out on it, it will go down. This also features a strategy I mentioned before. If you get Obstagoon Lead or another fighter, you can send in Walrian, do a heavy damage, and then farm it out with Surfetch, throw all that energy in the back. And because Trev is very good in the 1-0 scenario, you can do a lot of damage, do a lot of work, and this team can do really well for you in Ultra Premier Classic. This is one of the combinations I definitely plan on trying out and using when Ultra Premier Classic comes up, because in practice it did really good, so I have no doubt it will perform well when the cup actually comes out. All right, and last but not least, we have Excavalier, Trevenant, and Walrein as a safe switch. So you kind of have like double safe switch in this scenario. Trev and Walrein can both work. Excavalier is base is it's actually really it's really good. So Excavalier is a top five closer now. I'm using this one in the lead, but as you see down shields, Excavalier can do some freaking work, and it's really good. A for coverage still, not a lot of bulk, same grades as before, but the objective for this team is to do heavy damage. Damage, damage, damage. There's no such thing as defense. Actually, that's just how it is. You know, like a lot of the top teams, as you see, they can have a lot of bulk if you have Jellicent, etc. with them, but Jellicent kind of fell off the back end of the row because of Trevenant's existence and the fact that Trevenant also beats, it beats the, yeah, it beats a lot of things. That's why Trev is rated so high. Trev does, this team does incredibly well. If you lose the lead with Trev, I mean, if you lose the lead with Excavalier, you could say switch into Trev or Walrian. The Dragon types in the lead, if you do get the Dragon, like Dragonite, etc. or Kingdra, Excavalier does really well against those Dragon types. Also against Poison types because of its Steel typing. Except when you get lit on fire. The interesting thing is, when I put this team together and practice with it, you're literally, your biggest danger would be fire. But at the same time, you can still Shadow Ball a Charizard to death, and Walrian takes neutral damage from fire. So it's not that bad. Plus, because we're an Ultra Premier Classic, you do not see Talonflame XLs, which is really good. Otherwise, that would really suck. Because if Talonflame XL was allowed in here, this team would die a lot. But again, as you see here, this team is really strong. As you see, with Excavalier in the lead, with this combination round, your biggest threat are literally what Excavalier loses against, basically. As you see, fighters that outpressure it, which is why Machamp and Surfetch beat Excavalier. Yes, it does neutral damage, but because you don't get stabbed, that's why, as you see, and it takes a little bit for you to get the Mega Horn, etc. You can choose to use Acid Spray Excavalier. It's totally up to you. That actually works. You can have Drill Run, and you can also have Acid Spray, or you can use Aerial Ace, etc. It's up to you. But with this combination, very low threat score. And again, Excavalier is a number, is a top three closer. So. The stars align, you match, get to the zero scenario, and Excavalier's got some energy. You can do a lot of work against a lot of the Ultra Premier Classic meta. 
And as you see here, it actually beats a lot of the other fighters you might see. Ops, a lot of people are going to opt for Ops, Goon, and Scrafties in this meta because they beat both Trevenant and Walrian. So... Well, Scrafty isn't even, like, super safe against both those combinations. I've C-bombed and Earthquaked a lot of Scrafties to death. So, again, like, yeah, this team is still mad good. So, really good combination. You lose the lead. You got two options to choose from. You might want to choose to sacrifice Trevenant because Walrian has better closeout potential. But it's not a bad idea to put Trev in there as well. So, it's totally up to you. And that's GG's. I hope you all enjoyed the video. As you see, Walrian and Trev are a very strong combination, but Walrian can also blend with a whole lot of different other mods. You're like, King of Charmanders, why don't you do a top five? I just like the Walrian and Trev core a lot. And there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of things you can do with Walrian, but from all the combinations, like, Walrian and Trev is a very good pair with each other, so... I don't want to deviate from too much, but it's just what it is. Plus, Walrian and Trev, as much as I hate to say it, they're a lot, they're pretty readily available because both of them have recently came out. Fant for your Phantom was last year, and of course, Feel's been out forever. So, there are, uh, you got options. So, with that being said, I wanted to highlight Warian because since it's so recent, Warian, if you're a newer player to PvP and you can compete in Ultra League, it's probably going to be your strongest mod that you have as of right now outside of the other Legacy Community mods. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully, this gives you an idea of how Ultra League Classical absolutely ran over with this freaking Walrus because it really is that good and it's really powerful. Do me a huge favor, though. Please like and subscribe. It's totally free. You see these two little dinosaurs next to you? These two, Well, not dinosaurs. They're lizards. These two Charmaz next to you, there's a sub box at the bottom right. If you put your mouse over it, you can easily subscribe from over there. Really appreciate my current subscribers. Again, it's totally free, but I really do appreciate it. You can choose to or not, but it's free. It's free. So, really appreciate my current subscribers. Good luck on your Go Battle League sets, and I will see you guys on the next video.